Hey everyone, welcome to the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining us today is Mati, maintainer and project lead at Gitty, a privacy first open source alternative to GitHub and GitLab for organizations that want to self host their code base and maintain data sovereignty and privacy. Now, Mati is also co founder of Commit Go Inc., a Delaware corporation behind Gita that helps organizations with training and support when they're using Gita. The team recently shaped uh, Gita Cloud which uh, lets organizations to host their own instances and streamline their uh, developer operations. And then the team has been hard at work shipping a lot of new features and getting up to parity with GitHub. Uh, that would be Gitty Actions and CICD, backwards, backwards compatible with GitHub Actions. And then there's Gitty Packages, so you can store your artifacts in your code base, like your Helm charts, your Docker images, uh, you know, your Rust crates. And so, Mati, I'm very excited to hear about the journey so far and then discuss about Gitty's traction and community, uh, the plans for sustainability and monetization of the project, the decision to start the company behind the project, and then any advice you have to share to other maintainers and close with a demo of Gitty Club. Thank you for joining. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for having me. Uh, kick it off. So how's the experience been so far? I think Gitty is going into its eighth year now. Yeah, uh, so it was uh, started in November of 2016, uh, and so we just celebrated a birthday just this past November, and uh, it's, uh, um, yeah, no, very exciting, uh, 40,000 GitHub stars, over a thousand contributors, um, over a few hundred million Docker Hub pulls, um, yeah, and uh, so it's been a very exciting journey, and um uh, excited to see where it takes us. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing uh, these metrics with us. Um, who, who are the people mostly using uh, Gitty today? And, and I'm sure there's tons of people self-hosting that maybe you don't know about, but maybe what are the big organizations that you're in touch with today? Yeah, so um, uh, there's a ton of different uh, use cases for Gitty. And so it's not just like uh, one size fits all, like you think of uh, just like uh, developers using it, but there are data scientists, uh, data scientists are using it to store um, like their uh, Jupyter notebooks. Um, you know, we have uh, the Blender Foundation um, who created the Packages. open source 3D modeling software, uh, Google, Two Sigma, MediaTek, MasterCard, OpenStack, uh, just to name a few. Uh, I think, uh, like being able to start, uh, the company has been able to like, uh, signal to, uh, like everyone that, uh, there's a backing behind the project that it won't suddenly disappear and, uh, ensuring that your software supply chain doesn't go poof just, uh, because somebody, uh, isn't being uh, supported for uh, their open source contributions. The decision to start uh, Commit Go, um, what went through uh, your mind and you know the team's sort of deliberations when you were deciding to start the company behind the project? Uh, I was uh, an owner uh, project lead for four years at the time, and just seeing maintainers come and go and having to leave for like being able to like uh, take care of uh, sick family members, needing to like worry about their job, and just starting a family, just a ton of. Uh, different reasons that uh, they weren't able to volunteer and so by being able to start this organization we're able to like uh, support maintainers so they don't have to like decide between like something that they're passionate about something that they enjoy or uh, other commitments that they may have that are uh, more important than uh, contributing to open source and so um, uh, by being able to start Kimiko, we um, have that uh, strong foundation uh, to be able to support the project um, and be able to uh, make uh, like big contributions to the project of uh, Gitty Actions. Uh, the pull request uh, was entirely done by, by Blender. Uh, like was uh, contributed by the company being open source. Everything's able to be contributed back, and uh, we try to do that as much as possible. There's also been any funding behind to support more on the short term. Uh how has this played out so far and what are sort of like the plans you have for 2024 um, as it relates to monetization and to the sustainability of the project? Definitely. Uh, well, I think uh, with 2023, a lot of our focus was 
uh, building out uh, the Giti Cloud hosted in, uh, service uh, so that um, uh, people who wanted to use Giti, but they didn't want to manage an operating system, mm. update software, all of that. And because um, even though Giti is single binary, extremely lightweight, uh, we make it as easy as possible to run. There's this uh, general operations around it that people don't necessarily want to handle with. So by being able to uh, start Giti Cloud of offering those dedicated instances, ensuring the security and integrity around it so that uh, organizations can trust it with uh, their intellectual property. Um, and going through, uh, we're going through a SOC 2 audit right now to be able to assist people in their uh, compliance journey to uh, make sure that uh, it's uh, they're feeling trustworthy and whatnot of being able to uh, put their code. Uh, exactly, excellent. And now you've been doing this for for a little while now, you and the rest of the team. So, uh, what are the challenges you faced throughout, and then maybe any advice that you could share with other maintainers? Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, uh, some challenges are that. Uh, because it's a fairly unique uh, experience, um, uh, not many people uh, have gone through this. Uh, and so um, something that I can uh, suggest to people is build out uh, your network, being able to connect with people, uh, like share your experiences um, and um, ask for what other people's experiences have gone through. Um, I found that... Um, like uh, talking with um, uh, other open source projects and other companies have gone through something similar. Uh, it's nice to hear even if uh, you're facing something that somebody else has gone through it as well or that they're going through it at the same time. And so um, uh, you can uh, go through that as well with other people to screen that community. Mm -hmm. Yes, community is number one, absolutely. And maybe to just bring, you know, one of the, you know, countless examples. Uh, say, for example, that a contributor, you know, prepares a pull request, but maybe it wasn't something planned uh, or aligned with sort of like the, you know, the vision with the project or the technical decisions have made so far. Uh, how do you go about communicating to that contributor that, you know, hey, we might not be able to merge this pull request or, uh, yeah. What do you do there? Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely a good question. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different reasons why that might happen. Um, switching, like, hey, I'm, I switched Giti to use Subversion instead or something. Like, um, uh, there's, um, like, a mission statement and an ethos around Giti mm -hmm. of uh, being flexible and not necessarily prescriptive of how people use it. And so... Um, uh, generally, uh, a lot of uh, things go through, but, um, like if you're, uh, like changing uh, something significant with a project, uh, uh, it'll be discussed among maintainers and that feedback will be given. But I think the most important thing is to be open about it and, mm -hmm. uh, thank you for contributing it. Um, I, I don't, we don't know if like, this is the direction that we're feeling because of reasons X, Y, or Z. And also rather and uh, encourage people to like rather than uh contribute like just go off and like build this whole thing uh like discuss uh with the project first um to make sure that it does align with uh, the ethos of the project how's the team shaping up today yeah it's uh going along it's uh it's still uh really small um uh, but uh, we're being able, uh, we're uh, able to uh, like uh, contract uh, with people uh, to be able to like uh, focus on specific projects uh, to be able to contribute uh, to the projects. Uh, that's, that's that's great. Yeah. and those people are from the existing contributor uh, community. That exactly. Yeah. yeah, and then because that's uh, that's the reason by behind uh, why we've done what we've done is to be able to like. Uh, support people who have come here and even uh, possibly uh, bring people who uh, were 
uh, prevented from contributing to open source um, uh, previously for uh, whichever uh, life reason um, uh, and being able to support them through that process. Exactly. And, and those, you know, sustainability uh, concerns that you discussed earlier that apply to the internal team and the maintainers, they also apply to the contributors. So again, extending that, uh, you know, financial opportunity or, or ability to, mm -hmm. um, you know, be able to work on it through that. Um, it's, it's, it's def it definitely makes a, makes a big difference. And then, you know, kudos to you for, for doing this, and having the ability to do it. What is your, uh, maybe a big word, vision, but what, what is your vision for Gitty as, as time progresses? Or maybe what would be a milestone that, you know, you, you're setting your eyes uh, to? Uh, yeah, no, I think um, uh, the, the target that we were looking at uh, most recently was the launch of cloud to be able to like um, uh, bring uh, Gitty more than just uh, cell clusters um, and being able to run that and being able to um, uh, rely on the project run your own instance. Uh, I think the next steps are mm -hmm. um, expanding uh, resources around uh, the project, uh, improving documentation, and, uh, improving the code base, refactoring, uh, switching to like perhaps a more modern uh, UI of um, uh, removing technical debt and, mm -hmm. and just generally uh, supporting the project as it is uh, right now. And um, I'm, I'm curious if you have experienced this so far and what is sort of like the MO within the team for handling this when, you know, enterprises, bigger organizations might have some more custom development requests. Uh, what's sort of like your approach to uh, servicing those uh, requests? Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, that's a good question. Um, like we're open to, uh, like we can uh, build whichever integration you need with the project. Uh, but um, like just because uh, like your client doesn't necessarily mean it will make it into the open source project because um, like uh, like that's um, like that's the project like we can um, build and maintain that um, functionality for you but um, that uh, just because like uh, your funding the company doesn't necessarily mean you have say over the direction of the project. And um, like a really good example of this is uh, with uh, Blender, we integrated with their identity management system. And uh, one, it doesn't make sense to uh, put that back in the project because um, no one else is using their identity system. Um, but um, like the project uh, wouldn't accept it anyway, because again, uh, like, uh, the the case around it is like very specific, um, but um, yeah, Blender is great. Um, uh, and all the codes that we did for them is MIT licensed, and they have their fork available to clone and uh, use it. That's a great example. Um, yeah. Thanks, thanks for sharing this. And uh, you know, organizations that in the past have supported uh, Gitty, for example, to Sigma and others um, where maybe that was done through Open Collective or, you know, sponsorships, uh, other means uh, going forward. And, and I don't know if those in the past were tied to also some, some custom development or not, but going onwards, um, is the, do you have a specific approach on how to handle such instances now that there is also the company behind? I'm just curious how this will involve. Yeah, no, definitely. Um... Uh, like uh, with uh, Open Collective, that's uh, entirely for uh, the project itself. Um, I've, I've contributed my personal funds to it as well. Um, uh, but uh, if you're um, if you're coming to the company um, asking, "Hey, can we do X, Y, Z?" You can say, "Sure." Um, and we like, and hey, this makes sense to like put into the project, we'd like to do that as well. Um, and also encourage people to say, hey, there's an open collective, you can support the project as well. But then the company also supports the project too. So um, 
that's 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 great. And yeah, yeah so there's there's a lot of options to, to support the project, to, to crowdfund development or, mm -hmm. or steer funds towards a specific direction that can help companies today. Mm -hmm. And then of course you can also involve contributors along with a, a core team when it makes sense. Um, have you have there been any mistakes or sort of like uh, occasions where now looking back, um, you know, you could help advise other maintainers or founders to, to avoid such situations uh, or? Definitely. Um, I think uh, just uh, being like upfront with um, your contributors saying, hey, this is what's happening. And like when we, like all our pull requests are out in the open, you can see the decisions, what happened, where it went, and uh, just uh, keeping that uh, out out in front there. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just communicating with people. Communication is key in any relationship. That's, that's well said. Communication, transparency, absolutely. Uh, do you often go to conferences? Is that something that, you know, the team has been active in, if there's anything to discuss there uh, for maybe people who haven't done it so far, but would like to participate more. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so uh, the company uh, has uh, sponsored uh, a few conferences, uh, as well as we've sponsored uh, maintainers and uh, other community members to be able to attend. Uh, uh, so uh, we sponsored uh, maintainers going to DevOps Day Chicago. Um, we sponsored uh, DevOps Day London, as well as uh, some maintainers going. Uh, we were uh, sponsors of the Open Core Summit uh, this past December, where uh, it was a, a gathering of uh, open source uh, company founders. Nice. And uh, just being able to network that way was uh, great and like, uh, interesting to hear it's like oh yeah it's like you understand like what we're going through like uh like the process the journey um and i think in the coming year we'd like to sponsor uh, more events more maintainers um as well as um uh, we're uh hoping to be able to like enter things like google summer of code to be able to like mentor uh newcomers into the open source world um and uh, hopefully uh, uh hook them and uh, uh keep them in the open source uh contributors and i guess uh, um maybe, maybe this is a good time to also transition to where people can learn more about giti check out the code base uh, the website and then maybe we can have a you know a short demo from you if that's all right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah. uh, giti.com, git with a cup of tea is uh, the slogan. So that's how you can remember, uh, gitea.com. Uh, that's the website. That's all of the material there, instructions on self-posting, um, and, uh, get up or giti actions, um, links to various social media, Twitter, blue sky, LinkedIn, et cetera. Um, and, uh, obviously our code base as well is, uh, found there too. Sweet. And then if you'd like to maybe share your screen and we can actually take a glimpse as well as uh, check out the uh, Giti cloud. Definitely. Let's pop open to, here we go. So, uh, just launched in December is, uh, the Giti cloud, uh, a managed, uh, instance, uh, hosting provider. Um, where uh, we uh, take a little uh, twist on it, where um, uh, some uh, projects where you host, um, you have uh, like selection of regions. Uh, what we've done is we've taken uh, that uh, ethos of flexibility in Giti and we've uh, applied it to Giti as cloud as well, because more than just like, uh, you know, like your standard software as a service, uh, you don't even get an insight into where in the world it's run. We not only let you choose where in the world it's run, but the underlying uh, technology provider. So uh, if you're in 
of the Western US, you can host there. If you're in Europe, you can host there. Uh, if uh, you have a preference for one provider or the other, uh, you can uh, select that way. And uh, this is super neat. I like it. And uh, so, and we allow customization, changing name, changing username, and passwords. Um, and maintenance, so we'll have a window if we need to like uh, patch your instance for security, for um, just general upgrades or whatnot. And uh, you'd set that in like middle of the night, your time and you can hand that. And because we like, we handle everything, uh, there's the configuration and CI CD. Again, all that's managed by us. And uh, so uh, all you need to do is decide on how many uh, users you're going to uh, go with. And based on the number of users, you'll get a different quota uh, storage limits of storing your repositories or package artifacts, such as like Docker images, uh, issue attachments, release artifacts and a number of uh, minutes for being able to uh, run your code. So you don't need to manage uh, your uh, CI CD runner as well. And uh, based on the number of uh, users you may have, uh, you'll get a discount if you pay yearly, you'll get a discount. Um, and then I'm not gonna check out now because I don't wanna uh, put in my, uh, information, but we do have uh, a demo uh, public mm -hmm. uh, Getty instance where you can create new repositories, and you can manage issues, uh, set up branch protections to ensure that um, every pull request is approved by a certain number of people and that it passes CI before it gets merged. Absolutely. That's a, that's a complete uh, you know, Git server and client and uh, with a familiar UI. And I really like this uh, flow and onboarding flow, of the new instance actually, uh, very clean and helps, helps the user throughout the steps. This was, uh, this was super cool. Um, thanks so much. Thanks so much. And then we can, should we also show people the repository? Um, and then yes. yeah. anything else you might like to show, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's a fairly standard, um, uh, Git projects. You have your Go modules in the base repository, a fairly detailed readme of what to do after you clone. You can just get clone and build the binary yourself, and you can uh, just run it right away. Um, and guides on how to contribute to the project. Uh, we're translated into over, I think, 20 different languages around the world uh, with uh, quite a few of them uh, like fully translated into that language. Um, suggestions on where to go after you started running it of like asking questions, being able to like uh, join up with uh, the uh, project and chat with the team. Um, sponsors of the project, people who, uh, individual sponsors, uh, an FAQ on how to pronounce it, but everyone pronounces it differently. Uh, I say Gitti, some people say Giddy, some say Gittia. It's all acceptable. I, I don't mind whatsoever. Um, and uh, the reason, and an FAQ we get, why we're hosting elsewhere, why aren't we Hosting on our own. While we're hosting the majority of our repositories on Gitty.com, we just have one remaining right here. But because of tens of thousands of pull requests, issues, comments, uh, just the migration project, uh, the migration of being able to export all of that data into a new system uh, runs up against rate limits, and so it's a fairly long process. But it's uh, actively being worked on, uh, being able to let people know that the project's MIT licensed, as well as just uh, an overview of uh, what they might expect uh, when they start the project of having some screenshots. Yeah, I love it. And as you said, it's uh, for, for this kind of project and code base with all these contributions throughout many years, you know, porting it, um, migrating everything to Git, it takes a little bit of time, but 
I reckon this is something people can expect uh, this year to where the, the, the Gitty code base will be hosted on Gitty Cloud and people can contribute there. And, and already today, uh, people who are using GitHub or GitLab or, or soon enough, they will be able to just migrate everything and, and get yeah. started, right? Yeah, uh, Gitty has a built-in migration tool already. So even if you're not using uh, Gitty Cloud, you can still migrate from uh, other providers into your own instance, wherever it's hosted. Um, and we're also looking at ways of being able to like uh, support uh, contributors, being able to uh, contribute to the project wherever they are. If uh, they still want to send a pull request to GitHub, they can do that by uh, directing uh, most of the people to uh, the main source of truth of where the project uh, will eventually live. Sweet. This was uh, excellent. Thank you so much. <laughs> The demo. This was uh, great. Any any last uh, words that you might like to leave people with? And of course, we already saw people can come, uh, check out the repository, take Kitty for a spin, contribute. Um, so any 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 last words before we wrap this up? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, just um, hop into chat if uh, you have any questions. Uh, we're very happy to help. If you uh, want to start contribute, uh, we've uh, mentored uh, many people to be uh, with zero Go uh, development experience to being able to like uh, work on it uh, every day um, and just um, even if it's not uh, like it's you you're contributing to uh, just uh, look for uh, an open source project they're using and check them out and uh, maybe eventually you'll be able to uh, contribute to them as well and uh, just share your knowledge and your experience. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mati. This was wonderful. Um, was really great to have you. Wishing you happy growth and, and best of luck in 2024 and beyond. Thanks so much. Uh, thanks for having me. Take care. <laughs>